Akron Baptist Temple for over 60 years presenting the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to the community of Akron and Northeast Ohio. We are glad you're with us this Sunday morning. Come, join us as we worship our Lord in song and hear a message from God's Word.
question and first of all is this how long have you been a Christian in other words how long have you been a Christian how long have you known Jesus Christ as your personal Savior now, as you think about that let me ask you the same question in a different way and that is how long have you been out of prison? You say, well, Dallas, don't really look at it that way. Well, the Bible tells us that we were entangled and bondaged in sin. 
And there was nothing that we could do because that sin had power over us until Jesus Christ came and freed us. So yes, you were in prison. What it does for you, what it does for me, it makes us look at our life a little bit different, makes us realize just who we were in our sin, just how in need we were of a Savior. How long have you been a Christian? How long has it been since you've been out of prison? As you dwell on that this morning and think on that and what God has meant to you, living free, as we look at the passage of Scripture, you'll notice a word in there, the word bondage. Let me give to you the definition of bondage. It's what prevents you. It's what prevents you from enjoying life. That's bondage. Because some of you are here today, maybe many of you are here today, because you're wrestling with life. You're making bad decisions through the week, and those decisions are entangling you. They are taking you back into bondage, and you can't enjoy life. The question is, you look at that verse again this morning, and let me read it again. As I read it again, let me, I want you to notice the word yoke. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. With the yoke of bondage. Many years ago, in the United States of America, thousands of years ago, over in the Middle East, maybe even sometimes, even today, if you could travel over there, you would see this. And that is that you would see cattle or oxen, and you would see the farmer or the master or the owner, and would take the yoke and would put it upon the oxen and would clamp it down, and once it's clamped down, there is not one thing that that animal can do to release itself. It is now, has that yoke upon it, and has to do whatever the master asks it to do. And it continues with that yoke on until it is taken off. It says in the scripture, what is... The yoke, what is it talking about here? The yoke of bondage. Let me ask you a question again for some examples in your own life. What's entangling you? What's sucking the life out of you to where you can't enjoy life? Is it fear? Is it doubt? See, we think many times of of the temptations of the world and the pleasures of the world. And yes, those do destroy life. But also destroys life and ruins the joy and entangles you with the yoke of bondage is your fear and your doubt. And yes, even your guilt as you're here today over something Jesus has already forgiven you. But yet, what is your yoke? Today. All of you today, and somewhere or another, have been free as a Christian. But you know what that scripture tells us? What does it say? It has the word again in there. It means you and I have the tendency to, once we're free, to go back. Now, once you let an animal loose that is under the yoke, it will never wander back again to be wrapped in that yoke. But what do we do? Why do we do that? We say that we're enjoying life. And then the things that we in so-called are enjoying life are, turns around to us and we have to admit that we're addicted to. How could something that could be so joyful in life be called an addiction in our society? if it's supposed to give us joy. 
but yet it has entangled us. And you as a Christian that are sitting here today, that are listening, you have something in your life that you have a tendency to draw back on and that prison door that you have a tendency to pull back open and go back in. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? What keeps you and I going back? What keeps you going back? It's because something has control on you. Why does it have control? It has control because of this. You have never really realized how free that you are in Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. You have, because you have never really realized how free that you really are in Jesus Christ. Or you wouldn't go back again. As we look back at the scripture... What keeps you free? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. What saves us? What keeps us free? It is he who is called Jesus Christ. It seems as if we have two streams today going to heaven. We have the stream of legalism. And that is of religion and of the law and all the strict code that you have to live by. And then we have the stream of liberalism. One says that you have to adhere strictly to the law. The other one says you can do anything but yet still get into heaven. But what a person finds out is this. Once they begin to cross the stream of legalism and believe that they will be free by adhering to the law, they realize that there is no way that they can keep the law. There is no way that they can standard in their life to live by those strict codes of the law. And they step into that stream of legalism and it is so deep of the law that they drowned. Then we have those that are trying to go to heaven through the way of liberalism that believe that they can do anything that they want to do. And the reason that they step into the stream is because they see how shallow it is and how easy it is to walk through. The only thing that they don't realize is the instant they put their foot in it, yes, it is shallow, yes, it is easy to walk through, but yes, it is full of poison. And it gets within the pores of their foot and their leg and destroys them. And they thought that they could live any way that they wanted to and gain their way into heaven. But that lax lifestyle destroys them. One is legalism. Far, far to the right. One is liberalism. Far, far to the left. Neither one, even though they go straight up, they go off course. But what happens? But we have one who is called Jesus Christ who's made us free. What does he do? He cuts across the stream of liberalism. He cuts across the stream of legalism and he builds the bridge so you and I can cross on him and gain access into heaven. That is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone has made you free. Has made me free. That is a living freedom. Because we no longer have to walk by the strict code of that guideline that says you have to do this and you have to do that and one little thing and you're dying and going to hell. Or you can do anything you want and gain your access into heaven. No, Jesus Christ says, I've paid the penalty through my blood. I have crushed all the sin of this world on the cross of Calvary and I've built a bridge and all you have to do is walk across it and you're freed from bondage. As we see in the text of the scripture, there is a positive command and there is a negative. The positive is this, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And the negative is, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. 
The purpose of your salvation, the purpose of my salvation was to make you free, was to free you from sin. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, was to give you freedom over sin in this life and to give you eternal life in heaven because you will be free from sin. That's why. When will we realize it is freedom that we can live free, that we don't have to go through life feeling guilty or feeling like we're going to get caught again, but yet what do we do? It is because of this. It is because of your lack of faith and my lack of faith that we get entangled back into that yoke of bondage because for some reason, Satan is able to talk to you and to me and to tempt you enough to say to you, you know, this isn't really working, is it? Why don't you go back and try it again the old way? And there you go back again, walking back in and shutting the door to the prison. Why do we do that? The reason that we do that, that we aren't willing enough to trust Jesus Christ every day, every second of our life. That's why he's given us this book called the Bible. Because it shows you the path to stay free. Will we do it? Will we follow it? The Bible says to renew the joy of my salvation. To renew the joy. You know, it gets to be where it's not fun and games anymore. Because some of you still have opened and shut that door. I don't know how many times, and you call yourself a Christian. We call ourselves by the name who the one who has made us free. And yet for some reason we, we see ourselves going as no animal would ever do and going and putting that yoke on us and locking it down. Why do we do that? Because we don't realize what we have in Jesus Christ. The more you trust him by faith, the more you spend in God's word, the more that you realize the freedom of what Jesus Christ truly can give to you every day. That is your power to withstand Satan. That is your power so you, you will not doubt. You will not have fear. So that you, when you are tempted, that you will be able to say, I don't need that anymore. It's because I truly have found what it is to be free in life. I don't need to drink and to do drugs and to fall into a promiscuous lifestyle because I realize that is just taking me back into bondage again. I can live free through Jesus Christ if I stand in him. Will you stand? Will you stand in Jesus Christ? Will you stand fast? That means ready for whatever comes your way that I will stand because Jesus Christ is standing with me. What I'm trying to share with you today is don't quit. Don't give up. As I was watching the Olympic trials on the news, and just a highlight of it, Florence Griffin Joyner was running the heptathon, which is the ladies' decathlon. She has won a couple gold medals in years past. She has been a world champion. But yet, as our bodies do, she is older now. As they were running the last part of the race this week, you could see the pain and the agony that she was in. She continued to run, continued to run, and continued to run. Finally, she finished, I believe, last in the pack. But there was a purpose in her running because she knew that if she made it in a certain amount of time that she would again make the team, even though that day she would finish last. And as the news camera stayed on her, you could see the agony that she was in and she bent over in pain after the race in which they were showing yesterday. And all she wanted to know was bending down over, gasping her breath, 
as she stood back up, she said, did I make the team? Did I make the team? What did she do? She continued to run. How many times do you and I, in our mind, want to quit, want to give up? We want to go back to the way it used to be because Satan twists us and he tells us, you know, it's better this way. But Paul tells us in the New Testament to keep running, to keep running the race, and you will finish a winner. If you run and you run with Jesus Christ, and you can say at the end of your life, and I can say at the end of my life, that I have lived free, and because I have lived free, I have fought a good fight. Many years ago, Leonardo da Vinci painted the infamous picture, the famous picture that we know of, called The Last Supper. It took him years to complete that painting. But as he began to paint the picture of the Last Supper, he thought, who would he get to pose for Jesus Christ? Who would he get? He knew of a young man who sang in the choir in Milan, and he decided he would pose for Jesus Christ. He asked him, he came, he posed for Jesus Christ, and he drew the portrait of Jesus in the picture in which you see today. Many years went by before the painting was ever finished. There was one last person to paint in the picture, and that was the picture of Judas Iscariot at the table with Jesus Christ. As he began to try and find a person who would look like Judas, he began to look to the streets of Milan. He began to look, and he began to look, and he began to look. Finally, he noticed a man. He noticed a man crept over in life. He could see the wages of life on his face and even the evil that had come upon him through life of living such a ragged lifestyle. He approached the man of many years, and he asked him if he would come and sit for the painting of Judas. As he came and sat down, the man began to look around the room as if it was familiar to him. Listen carefully now. Without knowing, Leonardo da Vinci had picked out of the crowd many, many, many years later the same man who posed for Jesus Christ some many years before. He asked many years later to pose as Judas Iscariot. We trust you have been blessed by today's music and message. Remember, we need your continued prayers and financial support to bring the Akron Baptist Temple into your home. You may send your financial gifts to the address on the screen. If you would like to come and be a part of our church service, transportation is available. Please call the number on the screen for more information. Thank you for being a part of our Sunday morning worship. This program has been paid for and produced by the Akron Baptist Temple, Akron, Ohio.